lovely to see everyone again for our chat number 19. Woo-hoo. Incredible. <laughs> yes, it's just amazing when you start something, isn't it? And then next minute you're up to 19. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'll start with paying my respects and acknowledging country here. I'm here on Gadigal land. Um, the people of the Eora Nation, who are the traditional custodians. Um, and I want to really pay my respects to their, to the Gadigal elders past, present and emerging. And uh, I want to recognise that I am an invader and intruder on these lands. And I bring, wherever I go, my w- racism and white supremacy the artifacts of colonization and through those roles, I bring the autocrat and this is my Australian heritage. Hmm. So in that context, I seek to to open to all the voices, especially through the Uluru statement of voice, truth telling and treaty. So let's take a moment to acknowledge the first nations people on who who are the custodians of the lands we all are standing and sitting on we can i I think we're a nice small group why don't we speak out their names the the names of the custodians of your lands let's hear them banjalang orangery people and I'm on Kalango, Carib land. Yatiawa. Wonderful. Nice to hear. So, uh, yeah, well, I, I don't think I need to do the moving fearlessly <laughs> introduction because I think everyone knows uh, uh, this is, um, we've all, Uh, heard that this is a collaboration between Moving Communication and Fearless Communicators, who Deb is representing. And um, yeah, we continue to be thrilled and uh, privileged to host these conversations where we get to share our uh, thought and being leadership with each other. And, um, And today we are here with a thought and being leader, and that is Mandy Morris. And Mandy, many of you knows, or some of you, some uh, know through the Playback Theatre Network, because there are a few Playback Theatre practitioners here on the call. And that's how I know Mandy. And I'll still remember, because Mandy lives up the north of New South Wales, and I'm in Sydney, but I remember hosting a Sydney Playback Gathering, and Mandy bounding in, and your presence and openness (laughs) always... Um, strikes me as really powerful and generous and connected and uh, so I was you know no surprise to hear that you've moved into coaching and really thrilled to host you sharing your expertise and knowledge in um, vision so welcome Mandy thank you I'm I'm moving fearlessly welcome lovely to see you all it's an absolute privilege to be here um, with you Johanna and Deborah two extraordinary, wonderful women, as we all know. Um, I'm moving fearlessly. This is the first time I've actually presented this vision workshop in this platform. I've done it, you know, face to face. So I can feel my little heart going pitter patter. <laughs> but um, it's, it's wonderful. I, I've been enjoying in the last couple of years, really stepping into being uncomfortable and being mm. comfortably uncomfortable and just... <laughs> You know, doing that dance of, you know, confidence and fear and, and excitement. So I'm on this, I'm, I'm completely celebrating um, where, I'm, where, where I am and, and on this lifelong learning journey. Now, I have an action packed. I may have over, overdone it in terms of my content. So we'll see how we go. Like, it's going to be fluid. I'm perfectly imperfect. So if I have too much content, I'll sort of fast forward some of it because I think I tend to give more <laughs> than needed sometimes. But this as is I said, really... you're a generous spirit. <laughs> I am. I just I, I love this stuff and I want to share as much. So I'm going yeah. to be using PowerPoints. Um, there won't really be time for discussion during it. We'll make sure there's a bit of time afterwards. If there's any questions left hanging, 
please feel free to contact me and have a chat. It's just beautiful work that I do. Um, there will be some interaction and maybe I'll get some, you, some of you to do some playback because there's a particular couple of images that would be quite fun. <laughs> so um, I thought about playing the back myself, but I've got all of you guys to support me. So I'm going to share my screen, I trust. And, just and, and I up. think, um, Mandy, we might uh, just invite people to grab a pen and a piece of paper. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was, yes. thank you. Yeah. In my excitement, I forgot to say that. Yeah. So welcome. This is a, um, my very first inaugural um, virtual The Power of Vision workshop. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yay. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm, I love this work. I'm so passionate about it. Now, I'm, I, Coaching has come to me as a fairly recent incarnation over the last couple of years, two, three, four, two, three years. Um, and in that, I love it because I can kind of put all my hats together and, and I'm, I'm putting all the things and, and the more I do this work, the more I'm integrating all the things I love. And, and my, my vision is to integrate more and more of my creative arts background into this work. So saying that, let's start with a little story. <clears throat> Being a, a crazy theatre person, I love stories. So here's a very sweet little mouse and she has a family. And the other day they were, they were just going through, going about their business and um, just walking through the house. Very, very, um, you know, just exploratory with, with, um, with whiskers, twitching, you know, having a lovely time, bright eyed and, and little tailed, mousy tailed when all of a sudden a cat out of nowhere kind of approached them and, and looked incredibly ferocious and the cat was obviously very hungry. So the little mouse quickly, the mother took action, stood on her hind legs, little paws up there, and as big a mouse voice as she could muster went, ruff, 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 ruff. <laughs> now this was not what the um the cat was expecting and literally the cat hightailed out of there somewhat freaked out and a little scared and a little confused so um the mother mouse turned to her children and said children i want you to always remember this moment and know the power of knowing more than one language now that language is the language of success. You know, this is really just using story as a metaphor because there is a language of success. And, and once you consciously understand what this language is, you can basically apply it to any area of your life. So that's exciting. And that's a silly little story, but I like it. Mm -hmm. So raise your hand if you have some area of your life that you'd like to improve. <laughs> Yes, that's right. That's, that's what it's called to be human. And that's, that's all wonderful. Um, so my intention for this time together is to, to give you three tools to help you achieve your goals, to help you get a greater clarity on your goals and your dreams, and also to, to help you feel even more confident in your ability to achieve these goals and dreams. How's that sounding? Feel free to pop stuff in the chat as well. And I think Yo is going to can have a take a, a look at them so she can feed them back to me if needed. Mm. So question for you, everyone. How many of you have ever achieved a goal? We all have. Yeah. And how many of you um, at the time of the goal didn't actually know quite how you're going to achieve it? didn't really know they were good. They had a goal, but they didn't quite know how to get there. So mm. I've certainly been, yeah, maybe <laughs> some of you. Deb. So that actually proves that, you know, you are capable of far more than, you know, you know, when you've achieved something and you knew what you wanted, but you didn't actually know the steps, but you achieved it anyway. Now, out of those people who said, yes, they, they didn't know how they were going to achieve it. Has anyone here really surprised themselves in the, what happened, you know, how grand and amazing this, this goal turned out to be the one that they didn't know. See, see if I can see any more people, any hands up who's achieved a goal. And it was, it was far greater than they ever would have imagined. I've got a few. So if no one else is putting my hand up, Deb. I was as surprised as this guy because I had no idea how I was going to get my son at some stage and me and 
I did a charity cycle uh, about four years ago in India and I had no money and I managed to fundraise and, and I achieved this goal out of nowhere because I had this strong belief that I could do it. It was amazing. That was my lived experience. That was the biggest um, goal that I've ever achieved. And I blew myself away with what happened in terms of my ideas, the creative ideas that just came through me. Now, the interesting thing about goals and dreams that they're often born out of the challenges we face. And I love the metaphor of the, the lotus flower because the lotus flower literally is coming out of the mud. You know, that's the challenges, but the beauty that's revealed from those challenges is quite extraordinary. So life challenges us and it, it does, it, it definitely causes us to grow. Don't you agree? So there, watch out for that sign. Challenges ahead. Certainly 2020 this year has been one full of challenges. Now there's, there's two signals for growth or how I like to look at it, two signals. There's the longing and there's your discontent. The longing, um, just a feeling of wanting more. And then there's the discontent with sort of present circumstances. And often sort of the pain of um, the pain of this, of these longing and discontent. These are essential things that really help um, connect us and, and evolve us into a greater, bigger version of ourselves, which kind of, I'm going to briefly share my story, how I became what I'm doing today, how I'm sitting here at my desk and sharing this vision workshop with my life coaching hat on. It wasn't that long ago. It was about oh, five years ago when my life was completely a mess. Um, my partner and the father of my child had decided to, he had, he was sort of having a midlife crisis at 60 or almost 60, decided to run away, basically went back to England and left me literally holding our, holding the baby who was not quite 10, a big baby. But basically I, I had no support financially, emotionally, spiritually, anything, Lee. Um, and I'd also lost my job. I'd always tried to sort of have fairly flexible jobs because as a creative, I like to have that flexibility. So I'd lost my job as a body worker. And I have this image of myself. Um, it was very tragic, but I was outside a, um, the, the training room for the community college where I was doing a CERT, um, CERT 3 in, in disability support, which I had chosen to do because I basically needed to get a real job to get me through and to sort of provide enough money to live on. But I felt like I was selling my soul to the, the straight world because I hadn't ever really had a had a proper job. <laughs> I had many other sorts of jobs. So I was doing this training, which was very boring. Um, and I think on top of all what I was feeling, I was also quite menopausal, which made everything much more challenging. And I had tears running down my face outside this adult classroom with this beautiful teacher who was trying to sort of support me, but I had just fallen apart. <laughs> And I just felt, I just felt hopeless. I just felt my life had just kind of, I'd, I'd lost control of my life. Fast track, not that far into the future from, from that time, I actually uh, met up with a fellow um, playback actor who gave me her card. And on that card, it said life coach. And all of a sudden I had this, oh, wow, that's, that's me. That's, that's my destiny. That's what, that's what I'm destined to become. And even though at the time it was incredibly con contradictory to how I was showing up because I was a complete mess, I just knew that this is, this is my calling. I just knew it. I knew it viscerally. I knew it in my body, in my heart, in my spirit. So from that um, connection, I ended up doing some training in Australia um, with a lovely woman called Anne Hartley who gave me some good grounding tools but along the way, as my, um, as my resilience and as my sense of self sort of came back and I, I started to feel myself and I was enjoying the work as a, as a, a disability support worker um, and stepping into, you know, my, my back into my confidence, 
when I was ready, the teacher that I needed, well, showed herself to me. And I, a, a woman called Mary Morrissey from the Brave Thinking Institute in the States. So I ended up doing my, my um, another life coaching certification through the Brave Thinking Institute. And what I love about this work and what I so needed was I, I was looking for the transformational principles which would support me and my clients to move from where I am to where I would love to be. And these are some of the principles that I'll be sharing with you today. So it's, it's, a, it's a great story and I feel so incredibly blessed to have risen from the mud and now I am so in love with my life and I'm so blessed and so happy to, to be here with all of you. So that's my story. My promise in this all oh, of going straight up, my promise is, is to give you everything I can in this short period of time. Um, I may have over, over given you too much stuff, but we'll see. Let's start with a fun exercise. It's a bit of fun. It's a bit of engagement for you. It's a number exercise. Are you ready? Are you, are, are you ready? What I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal some numbers in a moment. And I want you to see how many you can find from one to 50. And I'm going to, I just might just count it in my head. I'm going to give you 20 seconds. Are you ready? Can, we, can I have a yay? Are we ready? <laughs> are we awake? Yay. <laughs> right, okay, ready? Are we ready? Bit of fun, don't get nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous. Ready? Go. Okay. Get as many as you can from one to, I might need to move these numbers around. Is it consecutive? One to 50. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. I can't find three. Three. <laughs> okay. And stopping. Okay, how do we go? Let's, let's, um, do you want to call out who got, what did you get? What's the highest number? Or... I got 10. 10, Aww. okay. I got seven. I'm out of the game. Oh, no, no, there's no, and this is not about, this is not a competition. <laughs> <laughs> it's so not a competition. Okay, Jen, what did you get? We can't hear oh, you, Jen. It's all right, that's okay. I got eight. You got eight, fantastic. Hi, yeah. Joe. Claire, how'd you go? <laughs> I got to six. Okay, gorgeous. Okay, now I'm going to show you a trick. This is really cool. You watch this. Now, if we, if we, normally I do this with a piece of paper, so this is the first time I've done it virtually, but it still works. Okay, we're going to, we're going to half the paper in half, and then we're going to do it again. So we've got four quadrants. Okay, now see if you can see a pattern. Where is number one? Okay, where is number two? Oh, you've where gone around the four three? quadrants. Where is number four? <laughs> Where is number five? Where is number six? Where is number seven? Number eight? You getting it? Yeah. So this is basically, <laughs> that's, this is, I'm giving you a little bit of a clue. So what's going to happen next is, now that you've got the clue, this is yes. a method. Okay, so are you ready to do it again? <laughs> Let's see how it goes. So the same thing and now that you've got the the way of doing it let's go and finishing oh okay how do we go 17 18. Oh, I got 11. That's, great. That's okay. Better than that's seven. That's okay, <laughs> darling. It's so not a competition. That's good. It's interesting. I've, I've, I've done this and, and mostly, you know, 99% of the time people get a better score. But I did it once with a, a, one of my participants in my vision workshop. I think he was quite a competitive young man and he did really, really well the first time. And I think the second time, I think he must have had some sort of performance anxiety or something. So he did worse. And I thought that was very interesting. But, but yeah. generally, generally, one does better. So, so what changed? What changed? Basically, you expanded your awareness of the pattern for how to create the results that you wanted. Yeah. 
or in other words, the pattern of success. So again, this is just a metaphoric game, really. So this proves the point that every one of us can improve the results you're getting in your life when you expand your awareness of the pattern for how to create those results. So we're going to look at the different areas in your life and you can see it's also been there's four quadrants here. So we have results in our health and well-being. We've got results in our relationships. We've got results in our vocation and we have results in our time and money freedom. So whether we're consciously, consciously doing stuff to look after our health and well-being or relationships or vacation, time and money, we do have results, don't we? You know, we're either feeling really healthy or we're not, or we're in relationship, we're not, or our relationships are, you know, thriving or not, but we have results. Mm. So the results you're getting in your life in these areas are a perfect reflection of your awareness of these areas. They're a perfect reflection of your awareness. So we're going to have a look. There's a, there's a results formula, and this will become fairly obvious when you, when you see it. Um, every one of us thinks it all begins, everything begins with a thought. I mean, even, even this pen, even, you know, the cup, even, I mean, everything be be began as a thought. And then next comes feelings. So let's try... See how connected these are. Um, okay, you, you've got the thought, oh my goodness, I've, I've just, I don't know where I put my keys. I've got to go off. I've, I've got a meeting. What's happening? What feelings are you getting? Or, you know, it can be, it can be a different experience. You've got an amazing, you, you, you're going out with a gorgeous friend. You've got the thought about going out to dinner with a gorgeous friend and the feeling. So there's a, there's a feeling attached to that. And then from the feeling comes actions and from actions come results. Thoughts, feelings, actions, results. Thoughts cause your feelings, which cause your actions, which cause your results. Now, a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it's actually, it all begins with the thoughts here. A lot of people think, you know, they think um, the results, they start with the results and they, they blame. This happened because, this happened because, 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 because. Crazy. But really, it all begins with thoughts. And thoughts cause your results. Now, this is a little quick um, minute. We might just, I'm not sure how much time we have, but just what I'd like you to do, we talked about um, longing and discontent. I just want you to take a minute with your journal. And I, I'd just like you to just, tune in to an area in your life where you have a bit of niggling you know you might just want to choose one of the quadrants an area that may not be it's not a 10 out of 10 you know in your relationships or in your vocation and when i say vocation it's more about how you choose to share your gifts with the world you know you may have a niggling about you know not enough time not enough money um or in your health so just just let's just take a minute and all of this stuff you can you can do more of and explore more of after this session because I'm fast tracking it. So just taking a moment, write down any any longing or discontent in a in a particular area that is sort of showing itself to you most strongly. And don't edit, just let whatever come out be be perfect.
And just just finishing it off and knowing you can come back to this. I mean, another thing I'd recommend you do, like I what I've been exploring is other ways, creative ways of, of exploring what it is that you, you know, the longing discontent. I mean, in terms of a multimodal approach, you can you can be moving your body and just connecting in a body way. What is it that's kind of coming up for me? What is it that I'm not happy about in my relationships or in my time and money lack of freedom? Or, you know, if you're a visual person, just, just draw it, scribble it. It's not about doing a... Um, a, a pretty picture, but it's about, it's about getting it out there. You know, there's a word ph phenomenology. When I did creative arts therapy, that's very much about getting it out there. So you can explore for yourself and find what it is that is the discontent is the longing. So I'm giving you a very quick taste of lots of things, the longing and the discontent. Another quick, let's have another quick game to sort of move that out of you. You might give yourself a little bit of a shake. Okay, now if you know this, you may know this, this is quite a fun little game. Okay, I'm going to ask you to look around your room or wherever you are and I want you to focus your attention on, see how many things you can see that are blue. So just check out, literally look around your room. What is it that's blue in your room? How many blues can you see? Blue, 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 blue. <laughs> Blue, blue and blue. And now close your eyes. Close your eyes. Everyone close their eyes. Now I want you to bring to mind all the things that you saw that were the color red. <laughs> and then just open your eyes. Now who had trouble seeing red? Who, who was so focused on the blue that they... Um, <laughs> It's a classic one. I mean, you've probably done this before, but it's really interesting. And it's, again, it's, it's, it's pointing out, um, it's pointing out what our amazing brain does, the reticular activating system. It basically, it, it chooses what we focus on or we choose what we focus on. And that's what we do in our lives, you know, and, you know, we, we, some people are optimists, they focus on, I mean, particularly in this time of COVID, it's interesting, the conversations I've had with people. A lot of people I know, they're focused on the positive. I mean, we've been quite blessed up here as well, but they've, they've gained a lot from it, even in the challenging times of it. And other people have had a terrible time and they've been focusing on the news. Like I actually haven't found myself watching the news very much at all because I don't find it very supportive for me to be doing my work in the world. So where you put your attention, what we pay attention to, we... We, we see, seek and ye shall find. I think there's a few gospel songs that say that, seek and ye shall find. Now, this brings us to, there's three principles I'm going to quickly go through, which are part of my dream building program, which I facilitate. The first principle is designing your dream. So this is a, this is a $6 million question. What do you really want? What do you really want? Now, be honest with yourself because it's amazing how many people actually haven't given themselves the time to think about what is it? What is it that I really, really want? What do I really want? Often it's a bit, look around the glasses, it's a bit blurry when you ask people what they really want. They actually haven't. They might have thought more about what colour curtains they were going to buy or what they were going to have for dinner. But, you know, in terms of big picture what do I really want in my life? They haven't got that clarity. But clarity is, clarity is power. Knowing what you really want, having a really, really clear vision of what you would love. So what, what we know about the human brain, it's when it's crystal clear what we want, we, we, I mean, from my own experience as well, you know, I've woken up to circumstances and opportunities and resources that have just come to me when I have got that level of clarity. That happened to me around my, my India trip where so many ideas came. It was amazing. So not, not just what you, what, what you want, but what would you love? That's putting another level because that's just not from an intellectual. That's from a sort of, that's from a heart place. What would you love? 
what would you love if you i mean you are the script writer of your life so if you're writing the script and if you put the how on hold for the moment what would you love in your health and well-being what would you love in your relationships how would you love to be using your time and talent in your vocation and what would you love in terms of your time and money freedom? So you had the choice to sort of do what you love, to have that freedom. What would you love? What would you love in your life? Now you get to, you get to do, do, do a little bit more writing here. And again, we're just going to touch on it because this is something that you can definitely go, go into more when we've finished this session. So if you have your writing and I encourage you to write it down, you know, for those of you who didn't write last time, I really encourage you to put it down and allow what comes in. Just trust what comes in. And in, in, in writing, it's really good to just use that awareness of your longing and discontent because they will give you ideas of what you would love if you don't have those ideas right now. It's also really good when you're thinking about what you'd love to be descriptive and, and have some images because we think in pictures. So if I say, don't think about the opera house, what are you thinking about? We have a picture in our head about the opera house. So we do think in pictures. Write about what you want, not what you don't want. And the other thing is, it's really beautiful to bathe this in, in gratitude. I am so happy and grateful now that I have this blah, 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 this relationship, this job, this whatever. Um, and, and when you write it down, like I'm, I'm quickly sharing with you how to write a vision statement, write it as if it's now. And I'm going to help you by popping you in a, in, in a time machine. Are you ready? <laughs> it's a fast, crazy um, trip we're having here. We're going all over the place. So, okay, here's my time machine. So, What's happened? You've got your pens ready to write your vision down. I haven't seen you all for three years, you know, and it's, I know I've had an amazing time. Have you had an amazing time, Joan? <laughs> you can just nod or, and Diana, you had a good time. Claire, Jen, Johanna, Deborah. <laughs> it's been, I know you have, I know all about you, Johanna. It's been, it's been going off, hasn't it? Your life has been amazing. And that's exactly what I would have expected. So, We've had amazing times and here we are back at Fearless Conversations and we are even more fearless. Our roar has sort of so amplified since we met those three years ago. It's really amazing. So excited to be on this journey with you. So, so um, when, when I invite you to write, it's just I want you to write as if, if it's three years from now. You are so, this amazing group of women, you've just, you've just, you've, you, you've got it, you know, you, you, everything has worked out, you know, in all those quadrants. So, and, and write it as if you're writing it now, because I want you to get that sense of lived experience. So, ready. So fantastic to see you here again. Oh my God, it's been amazing. Just write down, if I could hear you all talking at once, I'd do that. But if you just write down on paper, tell me about, tell me about your life. Tell me about what's going on in your health and well-being. We'll have about two minutes. Um, your love relationships, you know, I'd love to hear about those. I'm being nosy, I know. <laughs> Vocation, what are you doing with your time and, and with your amazing talent? And with your, your time and money freedom, how fantastic is it to have all this freedom and, and the financial abundance to do so, the things that you love? allow yourself to play and i'm going to sprinkle sort of magic play dust on you if you've forgotten how to do that because this is such an amazing thing to do so it's play time you're writing your script you are the woman three years from now living your dream in all four quadrants
Beautiful. Now, in the interest of time, I think we'll just we'll just finish it now, knowing that this is this is a living document. Um, I'd like you just to take a moment and um, just get a sense of how that feels. Remember that feeling. Remember that feeling. Can I just have a show of hands? Like, who got a visual feeling of that? Who had a feeling of excitement and expansion? Jen, Joe, fantastic, Diana. It's beautiful. So this is something that if you feel to connect with me later, I mean, I'll definitely spend some time just allowing you to, or supporting you to just take this on, but it's just a beautiful way of, of stepping into a vision driven life. It's so beautiful. And I get excited just particularly when people share their vision, it's just so amazing because, you know, it's, it's tangible, the energy. So, and when you do this too, I think sometimes people get scared about writing something and they think, oh my God, maybe that's not right. Or maybe I, you know, maybe something else is there. And this is why it's always good to sort of say at the end, this or something even greater still. And just know that when you write your vision, it's a living, it's a living document. It's not static. You can change your mind. You can sometimes by writing stuff down, it gives you a clarity that maybe that's not exactly what you want. That may have been coming from an intellectual place. Like, what do I love? So keep coming back to what do I love? Okay, fast and furious, dream building principle number two, deciding for your dream. So, oh, this is, does someone want to, oh, oops, I've just, anyway, we'll just skip that one because probably I need to, <clears throat> we need to suspend the how. It's really important to suspend the how when we're initially um, deciding on our dream, but decision is very important, deciding on the how. And when you have a dream too, it's, it's good to test it. Does it give me life? Does it align with my core values? Does it cause me to grow? Does it require help from a higher power? And does it have good in it for others? And if it, if it doesn't have these, it might be just something that, you know, something you might just like to do. Like, this is how I came to this work actually, because initially when I was working with some of my coaches from Australia, when I was training, we, we started doing um, this five or well, 10 wish group, 10 wishes groups. And because we didn't have the transformational principles, we started off with these great sharings. I'm going to do this and this and this. And over a very, very short period of time, they shrunk, you know, till we were kind of doing activities like, oh, maybe I'll, I'll get to clean the car or. So that's why I love all this transformational, all these wonderful transformational tools. Just a very quick um, read from a, a wonderful guy, Bob, and I've just lost him. I think we'll just give that a miss because we're running out of time. But basically... He said the most important thing and the magic, magic word is making a decision, making a decision, deciding. There's a, a little story I'll quickly share and it's about a guy who wanted to, he had a check for $10,000. He went to the bank and um, he wanted the money from the teller and the teller very politely said, um, that's fine, sir, but you need to sign your name on the back of the check. And and he, he refused. He said, I'm not going to sign my name to the back of the check. You know, I, you may take the, take the money if I do that. I may not get the money. So, so the teller sort of sent him away and said, look, I'm sorry, I can't help you unless you sign the name on the back of the check. Um, I can't do anything. So the guy did this um, two, three other times and all the tellers were saying the same. Look, I'm sorry, sir, but we cannot give you your money if you do not sign your name to the back of the check. So finally he went to another bank and there was a teller there and, and, and the teller was, I think the teller must've had a bit of a bad day and the teller was not quite as patient as the other ones. And then by the end of this gentleman saying, look, I want my money. Um, and the teller would, it said numerous times, look, you have to sign your name to the back of the check. In the end, the teller got out a rubber baton and just whacked him over the head and said, for heaven's sake, just sign the check. And, and and the guy said, oh, okay. So he signed the check. He signed the check and the teller gave him some money. I don't condone violence, by the way. It's just a metaphoric story. It was a very soft baton, but it did kind of wake him up. So the guy went back to the, um, the first teller and said, I got my money. 
the teller at that bank gave me my money. And I and the teller said, I bet he asked you to sign um, your name on the back of the check. And the guy said, yes, um, he did, but but no one quite explained it the way that he did. <laughs> so he got the point. So it's really the point of this crazy story is about if you have an idea, you have to you have to sign your name to it. To have our dream, we must be willing to sign our name to the thing that we want. And I guess for me, stepping into my role as a as a life coach, it's it's this is early incarnation for me, but I'm doing it. I'm you know, I'm finally, it's taken me a couple of years, but I'm finally putting my name on that, on that check, that metaphoric check and saying, this is what I'm doing now. This is my passion. This is, this is where my energy is going. This is what I love. And finally, dream builder number three, principle. How are we going for time? We're doing You're okay. You're all right, Mandy. You're just, Good. Yep. you've got about, Past. yeah, six seven minutes we're doing well befriending your fear so fear is an interesting thing so when you choose and i'd love to see it's a show of hands if you experience this when you choose to step out of your comfort zone it's not when it's not if fear is going to be there it it will be there from my experience it's there it's it was here for me a little bit when i began presenting today but you know, I, I feel the fear and do it anyway. So it's about befriending that fear. Mm. So you know, it's interesting when you choose to do something, this is what I wanted you to play back. <laughs> Maybe I will. I feel the fear. Okay. Well, this is, a, this is one part of you. This, this is a dilemma. This is a pair. This is an obvious pair. Like you want to do something, you're feeling like part of you, yes, I've so got this. I'm so confident. And the other part's like, oh, I don't know. I'm a bit scared. I wonder how, we, can we play that back? Who wants to, who wants to do that? Just I think it is one. played back just there. It is it? played back. Okay. <laughs> well, you can, I sort of played that back as well. But, you know, that's a classic pair in terms of talking about playback. I love that. So part of you, and, and I've often had this in my life, like part of me is like, I've so got this. And the other part is like, oh. And it's like, which, which one do you want to feed? Do you want to feed the part of you that is, you know, the confident one that knows, that knows that, you know, you've got this, or do you want to feed this scared little guy? <laughs> He's a cutie. So what if you fail? What if you fail? So how many of you have had a failure in your life? Let's have a show of hands. Yay, Jen, Joe, Diane. Claire nodding ahead. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we all have. I mean, that's how we are as magnificent as we are because we have had failures and we've moved through them. You know, a great metaphor again, like learning something we all do. We learned how to walk. And look, there's many, many failures in that. We learned how to walk, but it wasn't an instant thing. So there was many times that we stood up and we fell down and we stood up and we fall down. It's beautiful to watch young children, babies doing this. Because it's not like, you know, they do it a couple of times and they say, oh, look, that's too hard. I don't think I'm meant to be a walker. <laughs> so that's what we do. And the beautiful thing also about this photograph is that there's support there. You know, there's loving support. And what I'm really, really appreciating in my life these days and what I can feel in these dangerous conversations is the community, we are here to support each other. I know Deborah and Johanna have been really supportive for me to, to get out here and step into my fear and, and, and present. So that level of supporting each other is just such a powerful, powerful way to live. So great dream builders are willing to fail and rise again. I mean, amazing people like Oprah Winfrey and she was fired by TV executives because she was not fit for television. Well, she's done pretty well <laughs> for someone who wasn't fit for television. Um, Steven Spielberg, he was rejected from the film school, USC film school, three times. He's done okay for himself, hasn't he? J.K. Rowling, uh, an amazing success story. And I'm sure the publishing houses who rejected her book are kicking themselves to this day 
First Harry Potter novel rejected by publishers 12 times. Wow. What resilience, what an amazing resilience. She just kept getting back up there. Um, Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper for lack, lacking imagination. That is ridiculous. <laughs> Um, Bruce, Springsteen, Bruce Springsteen fired from his first band because, anyone know? Because he couldn't sing. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's really interesting. I find this really interesting in terms of historically because Henry Ford failed at, failed at three, um, three businesses before starting Ford Motor Company at age 53. Now, in his time, 53 was quite old, and I think that's really amazing. So fear and failure are actually prerequisites for achieving great dreams, just to know that. So the thing is, okay, fear will arise. What do we do? What do we do when fear arises? What can we do? We go back to the drawing board. We reconnect to our dream. That's why having a vision written down is such an amazing support. It's such a powerful tool. So if you feel to um, in your, on your paper, just what is one action I can take that would move me in the direction of my dream? So just write one thing and it can be a tiny baby step. I think it's really important to, to um, make things attainable. So you get that sense of moving forward because, you know, many, many baby steps gets you up Mount Everest one thing you can do so i know this has been a fast and furious sharing but what we've covered we've had a bit of fun i hope we've played some games we've, we've looked at principle number one designing your dream deciding for your dream the importance of actually putting your name on the back of the check and also making friends with fear befriending your fear so this is a um those of you who resonate with what I'm sharing, and I would love, I'm passionate about this work, I would love to offer any of you a complimentary, so it's a dream building breakthrough session where basically we get to explore in a much greater depth and on a one-on-one, -on -one, um, your logging and discontent and then bringing you into that dream space so you really get an experience of what that is. So if you're interested, um, I think, Deborah's going to have my contact details and feel free to email me, ring me if you want to know anything or just any questions. I'm really happy to chat. Let's finish with an inspirational quote. Whatever you can do or dream you can, begin it. Boldness has genius, power and magic in it. And that's the end of my very fast and furious... <laughs> <laughs> probably too much information but you know I just wanted to give I, I wanted to overgive. <laughs> so and now I'm going to stop I'm going to stop sharing my screen and hopefully I'll get back to see how we go and there we are mm. can I make oh, a suggestion okay. Mandy yes I think it would be great if you want to put your email or any other way people could contact you yeah. directly in the into chat? the chat absolutely thank you because I will put it in the email as well when I send the replay because there's also other people who registered yeah for this who will be watching the replay and not mm. with us mm. but I just think why not mm. throw it straight in there that's, that's right. right and I'm, 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 I'm really want to like grab it today so I had fun I hope you did yes <laughs> <laughs> it was it was probably pretty full on, but it's just like I'm like that. I'm very enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah. So there's something. There's a little bit of an action going on in the chat here, which is what there's a, a conversation around six fears. Is there or what? Yeah. Six what? fears. Who was Diana put that in? I'm oh. interested in that too. Okay, and tell me what the six fears. Uh, they're out of the um, that Think and Grow Rich book. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. So there's the fear of poverty. There's a fear of criticism. Um, there's, um, there's the fear of ill health. There's a fear of aging. And I haven't got to the other two at the moment, yeah. so I can't yeah. tell you, but I can, I can get them, but I can tell you they're yeah. hitting big girls with me, those ones. Yeah. Yeah. The highest yeah. one is the poverty and how you, you're with that. Yeah. Mm. So, 
yeah, that's sort of, it's at the end of his book. Um, and and, he's, and it, the thing that, it, 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 one of the things that he says is that there's doubt, um, uncertainty and fear undermine everything. Mm, absolutely. Mm. So really now I, whenever sort of doubt comes in, I go believe, be certain, be just, no, doubt, decisiveness or indecision. Mm. Indecision, doubt, and fear. So now I go, and this is only just very recent. I'm now going believe, be decisive, and be courageous. Yeah, mm. they're the words I'm trying to put my. Yeah. Because the other thing mm. he says in the book is that you can't, your brain can't hold on to, and your picture shows that that playback when you did to the kid, the yeah. face. Your brain can't hold on to fear negative and positive it can only yeah, hold on to yeah, one at a time yeah. and and it is like that there's a story about you know which an, an indian proverb you know a, a boy going out into doing his ritual his coming to manhood and you know there's a fear and there's the kind of part of him that's really knows he's got it and you know the wise man basically said you know one of them's the, the the positive aspect the powerful one is the white dog and the you know the fear is a black dog and basically the 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 wise man said you know, really, depending on which one you choose to feed is the one that you're going to be experiencing. And this is what yeah. people have done that in COVID. Like this year has been amazing. It's been very obvious which, which dog people are feeding during this, you know, very unusual year. Mm. Mm. So this work really supports you in in becoming your own scriptwriter, like whether you want to be playing a tragedy and focusing on the sort of on on the the we all have every aspect in us, I believe. But you know, which which one are you choosing? Which one are you deciding to follow? Hmm. And it's a practice, so it's not it's not an immediate thing. And it's it's you know, like I think most things, it's a practice. It's not a one off. But you know, what I work with is is a transformational. It's a program which you can keep keep I, I keep reusing it i keep living it it's it's a way of living really it's learning how to come from vision as opposed to circumstances or you know or the negative um, beliefs that come up for most mm. of us because we're human mm. Mm. thanks so much Matt. oh sorry diana the other two fears was the fear of loss of love and the fear of death mm. Uh, mm. yeah so i can write them give them to you to yeah, to share but, yeah. in the email, Deb. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mandy. That was a gorgeous session. <laughs> yeah. 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 And actually, I, I should mention, if you want to, I've just started, I'm starting a movement, which is funny. It's, it's, I've got a Facebook group called Raw Sisterhood, which stands for, and I'd love to invite you to join me. I should put it in the yeah. chat. And Raw put stands that, for... Deb can send it through. Yep, go on. Raw sorry. stands for realize your original authentic radiance. And it's also, I like the metaphor again of the lion, the roaring, because I mean, you can, you can, to, to find your voice, to support each other. It's just women. I've chosen to go with women. I've fallen in love with the idea of just women <laughs> these days. I, and, you know, and to have a sisterhood where we can support each other. It's the most extraordinary, um, it's really an only in the last little while that I've had such a strong feeling of connection. I've been doing some training um, and I've met women from all over the world, you know, and we're really supporting each other. And it's so amazing. So amazing. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So share it, definitely share it um, anything. And uh, uh, with Deb, who can put it in that um, group email with the recording, uh, Yes, thanks so much, Mandy. That was, um, you know, it's always such a powerful question to come back to your vision and to spend time, uh, you know, sitting with that in, in oneself, I find for me, uh, because we get so busy doing, doing, doing and doing the next thing and getting through Absolutely. the list, you know, just yeah. to survive. So really taking the time to go, well, what, what, what is that vision? And speaking from the present tense, very powerful. Mm. So uh, I think uh, let's all let's all put on our raw as a way as one way to close. Let's all um, uh, being the expressive theatre person that I am. I love the image of the raw. And Mandy, with your hair, you look so like the lion. <laughs> <laughs> and you may not be a lion. Maybe you're a pussycat. Who knows? I'm, I'm, I'm a pussycat and I'm a lion, as we all are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We're 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 everything, but. Um, 
Okay, and in and in the spirit of Helen Reddy, sisters, let's mm -hmm. roar. One, two, three. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> it does feel good. It does feel good. It's very empowering. So thanks so much, Mandy, for sharing uh, you know, this expertise and 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 uh your your journey with us. It's been really rich and I think everyone has had different um, points of insight and connection with their vision so um yeah that we're going to close next week we're back with i've forgotten deb next you've... week we have sally swain oh Crea sally. creativity as that's a right way, yes as survival can I, and can I, thriving yes can I say and, something? sally swain was the one that gave me her business card Ah. <laughs> oh my goodness she was, the one. she was she was my catalyst so i have to be there to yes. next week she's yes. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she's a creativity coach and has been in the business for a long time mm, yeah. and is really working on how we use the, our creativity to generate resilience in ourselves so mm. she's going to be sharing uh around that i'm sure it'll be a fun session because she likes to have fun as we all do <laughs> So let's recognize each other on our way out into our days, um, holding our visions in our hearts, minds, <laughs> spirits. So we'll put our hands up and one at a time, acknowledge each other that um, appreciate each other. So I want to appreciate you, Mandy, for being here with us and, and sharing. I see you and thank you. Thank you. And once, you ha once you've been acknowledged, you put your hand down. And then you see someone else and acknowledge them. I want to acknowledge you, Johanna, for um, for supporting and 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 being an amazing role model and and mentor and and all the wonderful gifts that you share. Thank you, thank you, Mandy. That's lovely to hear. So I'll double dip. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. And, uh, that's okay. That's a lovely thing. Something wrong with double dipping? Can I have more? <laughs> yes, I'll have more. So I want to see and acknowledge Claire over the ditch. So <laughs> strongly present. I love having you here. I see you and thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you, Johanna. It's a pleasure to be here. You guys are so mm, delicious. <laughs> I just want to, I want to acknowledge Jen, your ebullience and joy the mm. minute you turn on the zoom and you're just <laughs> radiating with it. It's so welcoming and it just fills my heart up. So thank you so much. Thank you, Claire. Oh, <laughs> um, I'm Deb. I'd like to acknowledge you. Um, thank you just so much for just everything really. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Joe, I'm so glad when you came onto the video. At first, I was like, Where's our Joe? Where's our Joe? She's one of our people. And then you came fully, and I was like, Ah, the gang's back together again. I appreciate you. I appreciate you for consistently being with our community. And you're always so generous and warm and I see you and thank you. Thank you, Deborah. That's so lovely. I'm so glad to be here too. And Diana, who actually we connected over the coffee. So we know, know each other so much more now, which is lovely. I see you and I thank you. And it's gorgeous to see you here this morning, Diana. Thank you, Joe. And, and thank you, everybody. Yay! Yay. You give me energy, and I look forward to my Wednesday mornings. And, yes. <laughs> and we love you being here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, wishing you all well <coughs> next week. Hopefully, we all we will reconvene next week. Go well with your your visions, your dreams, your passions, your joys, your fears. <laughs> <laughs> your play have a great week thank you Until thank you so week. much and Ciao. thank you again Maggie, for the session Bye. my pleasure thank you for having me it was a it was Bye. a privilege <laughs>